Kelly here. Want to make a quick video in the Northeast right now, upstate New York. We just got hit with anywhere from six to twelve inches of snow. A lot of questions out there, people, especially in the Midwest and in, and pretty much across the United States and parts of Canada right now, uh, wondering how to use a snow dispatch and the optimal workflow for service autopilot. So I'm going to go in um, today and uh, have at least one, if not two, of these live sessions. How to break this down and how to use the snow dispatch in your business. Um, we've done this with well over 600 residential driveways and about 68 to 70 commercial parking lots. So um, we, we've run this system through the ringer and we do have an optimal workflow. So depending on um, timeline here, uh, I've got a call that I've got to hop on in a little bit, but I'm going to at least lay the foundations. If we don't get through all of it, uh, we'll come back on later, later today um, for a second episode, how to uh, finish this up. But a lot of people want to know how to do this. So uh, we're going to dive into it right now. And um, show you how to do that. So I'm going to minimize the screen here and get into it. So first thing we're going to do right off the bat is if you haven't set up your um, stakes yet for the season, most people have, but if you haven't, I'm going to show you how to set up a package to tackle your preseason staking and removal and sod repair if that's something you do. So first thing is we're going to go into um, the gear icon and we're going to type in services. And services is going to be setting up two separate services, one for uh, setting up the stakes and one for taking them down. So what we're going to do is go in and add a service. And we're going to just call it test preseason staking. And for simplicity, I'm going to use that as the same code and invoice description income account. I'm going to go in and put that under snow plowing and under class. I'm going to put that in for winter. So uh, pro tip, if you are doing this, you'd want to um, basically uh, set up a class and account so you can differentiate your business from winter to summer as a financial uh, P&L in QuickBooks. Uh, in the other services we're going to be setting up, we're going to want to show in snow dispatch right now. This package is not going to be part of a snow dispatch. So we are going to go in and paste that out. And hit save and new. And service mode is going to be per unit. So save and new. So we've got the original staking the season now. And I'm going to do postseason stake removal. So we're laying all the foundational parts first here. And then we will show you how to bring this all together. So per unit and just for time's sake, the invoice and estimate descriptions will be the same. Uh, we're going to assign this to snow plowing again with the class of winter and estimates. And that should cover it. So we're going to hit save. And we've gone out and got past 31 characters. So While we're in here, now that we have this, we're going to set up two additional services, one for uh, plowing to be routed and salting to be routed. And if it's applicable in your business, sidewalks to be routed as well. So we're also going to go in and create these general buckets. Actually, so it is plowing. You can break this up residential and commercial too, uh, if that's applicable to your business. And that's how we did it at Callahan's. So we're just going to set up these. Um, actually, I, I take that back. So this is not a service. We're actually going to go in and take this and um, go under teams and set up a team. So it's a, an actual holding pattern for all the jobs we're going to stick on there. So you can see we've got 2017 mode to be scheduled list. We're doing the same thing here for our plowing. And so we got plowing to be routed and... We're going to have salting to be routed as well. But you may, depending on each service you have, you would definitely want to have this set up for each type of service because we're creating a big holding cell so we can see all the, the jobs on one map to optimize. So you get the idea. We're going to go in for plowing to be routed, salting to be routed, sidewalk to be routed. And if you do commercial and residential, you probably want to segment those as well, or uh, maybe loaders or skid steers, depending on how you break those jobs up. So next thing we got here is um, now that we've got our our packages to set up the stakes and remove them, 
um, the services for this package and the crews, the holding cells for the crews. Uh, we're going into gear icon and master packages. And this is going to get us the packages here. So we're going to go in and add a package and snow stakes. And repair and the description would just be the just that so this is our starting this is the beginning of the winter and then the end for repair some renewal date we're gonna put that in for 2020 in this video and we'll put it in for uh, August so this one is we're gonna name this is staking preseason this one is Stake removal and repair. And we're going to go in and select the two services we just had. So stake preseason and test. And we've got uh, stake removal. And we're going to probably start our staking hopefully uh, in November 1st through, let's just say, we want everything done by the 20th. And in the repairs, if our contract ends April 1st, we're probably going to go in and say, okay, anywhere from April 2nd through one well, April, let's say April 8th. Now these are this year. So this year we actually have to go in and adjust the date. And that should cover. So we've got it between November 1st and the, November 20th, 2019, and November or April 2nd, the following year. And the 8th, the following year. So that's going to catch us next spring, believe it or not. So we've got those dates and we're going to change So what's going to happen is that's going to come up on the waiting list and we can dispatch all the, the seasonal staking at the beginning of the year and then all the removal and sod repair at the end. So that's going to cover us foundationally. We've also created two services, a holding pattern. So next thing is we go in to add a client. There's several different ways of scheduling a service autopilot. So the first one here is um, if it doesn't have a contract, so you're billing per push or per visit, um, but there's no installment payments. So you're going to go in and add a on-demand job. So we'd go in and hit add and add an on-demand job. So really quickly, before we set those up, if you haven't set these services up in service autopilot, there are a few things that you need to know about on the service level. Um, the main one that being is, uh, it needs to be turned on. So you need to have a service, a code, and show in snow dispatch. This is the only way it's going to show up. We need to know the tax code, the service mode, invoice, the amount and class, if you have that, and the estimate set up there. But the main thing, and able to see it in what we're doing here is it needs to show up in snow dispatch. So that's the main thing you want to make sure when you set those services up. So next thing is when we go into a client, we're going to start showing you the different ways to add these snow services. Um, and later on this live webinar or the second one later today, I'm going to show you how to actually um, set up these routes and optimize them so they default each time. So you're not recreating routes every night. So under add a job, we go into add a on-demand job. That's an on-demand job because it only is going to be triggered when it snows. So you're going to go in and select your service. Like I said, if it doesn't have shown snow dispatch, it's not going to be here. So let's just say we have a um, snow plowing season for the lot or per trip. I'm going to do a per trip um, service right now. And I'm going to assign this to our plowing to be scheduled route. So what we would do is we've got um, a bunch of different options here. But when we go in, we can go in and literally grab the holding bucket that we made for the plowing. So obviously, we've got a ton here in this test account. But uh, we've got a bunch of them here. Let me see if I can find this real quick. So plowing to be routed. So that is where it's going to go. And we're going to assign all our snow jobs to that. And then all our salt jobs to salting to be routed. And all our sidewalk jobs to sidewalks to be routed if they're separate crews. Now, in this instance, I'm going to say it's a, a three-inch trigger for a driveway. 
and it's authorized seven days a week. And the invoice type on this one is going to be a per inch per uh, per push per inch. So this is just we're, we're charging per push. Now, if there's no cap and we're just chart like whether there's one inch or there's 10 inches and it's just the same amount, we would say from three inches to say 99 to keep it consistent is the rate of maybe $35 a push. And maybe it takes 0.05 hours and that's flat rate. Now, so that's one way of doing it in a three inch trigger and it doesn't matter how much snow is, but it's just a set price per push. The next option is here is let's say it's a three inch trigger, but um, we're charging per inch different increments. So maybe from three to five inches is 35 and we add a range and we can say from six to eight inches is $40 and 0.07 hours. So this is a way to go in and create that granularity. If you're in, my, in your market charge per inch in increments um, per push. So that's one way to tackle that there. Uh, next option is, is let's just say we have a, um, an hourly event. So maybe it's a loader and we just charge by the hour. So from, uh, three to five inches is a rate of X amount of dollars per hour. And when we go in and click hourly, it's going to change that hourly rate right there. So maybe we're charging $115 an hour for that loader between three to five inches. So that's another way of setting that up. So the next thing is if we're just tra charging per push, and this would be the same for sidewalks um, or salting. So if we have a salting uh, scenario, we would go in and just like we have the example here, add a job on demand. Um, and it's assaulting the parking lot needs to be scheduled. And I, I recommend a trigger inch of maybe a quarter inch. So it's less than uh, something you would be plowing. So you can trigger that uh, inch and just grab just those amount. So we did from 0.25 inches to 99 was $500 and 0.33 hours. And it's a flat rate. Um, you can see now this is under a contract with some limits. So I'm going to show you how to set that up next. Uh, but basically right now, if there is no installments with so many trips or hours underneath it, uh, we can go right in to add a job and add that in. So the next thing we do is add a contract. So I'm, I already got one in here so I can show you what it looks like. Um, so on a high level, a contract is you're going to have to have the, the contract name, start and end date, and we'd add in the verbiage you want on the invoice. And once you're done, you hit plus and add it in here. So snow removal services installment and default service. You need to assign it to something. So I'm putting a snow plowing for the season for the lot. And I've got a $15,000 installment in January, February, and March and November, December. Uh, I'm selecting this as the bill the first day of the month. And I'm going to bill one day in advance. And the payment area is check. And we're going to auto generate it. It's active. And if there's sub properties, we're going to include those. So that's the foundational part of setting up this contract. Now, if the plowing and salting was included, but maybe stacking removal wasn't, you could bill out the installments with that underneath the contract and bill out separately for uh, those services as well. So it's not holding you hostage to just that contract amount. We can bill up and above that. So as we go in, we go in and add a contract item. I've done that already. So we got clearing of uh, garage and walks. So right there, um, we're never going to charge for overages. But maybe salting of the parking lot, I go in and say, if it's greater than or equal to 20 visits and about to exceed this, it's going to alert this role or person. And yes, we want to, uh, if the quantity of visits are over that 20, we want to build that out. So we've capped that contract at 20 visits for the salting where the snow plowing is still unlimited and there's no cap and so neither for the sidewalk. So you're able to have that granularity per service of a quantity or cap on the service for quantity visits or hours as well. And hours would fall right in here. So the condition is greater than or equal to so many hours, say maybe 20 hours and we'd alert someone and then we can change that to yes, if the hours are over, we bill out by an hourly rate. And some of that information is going to pull over to the actual job when we, we create that. So uh, we'd go in and hit save there. So now once we have the contract, I can go in and add a job on demand job. And under invoice setup, I'm going to go in and select the contract. And now that contract will preload. So that contract specific to each client. It's not an overall contract on the whole um, system. Now we can select the cap type. Is it, There's no cap, so it's unlimited. Number of inches, 
number of pushes or number of vents. So let's just say number of pushes. So the cap is maybe 20 visits, pushes, and I'm going to reset that at the contract year. So once that's set up, uh, we can go in and create an overage description here um, of plowing over contract limit of 20 pushes. So that's how we set that up. And then we'd go in and select the service of, let's just say, snow uh, commercial parking lot per trip. Or in this instance, maybe it's the lot because it's up to 20. So that'd probably fall underneath our retainer. And um, we're going to select the assignee. So that is going to be that plow truck to um, uh, that in bucketed. So that plowing commercial salting needs to be uh, done or commercial plowing that needs to be scheduled. So we're going to go in and use that bucketed generic um, service that we had before. So we're going to go plowing need to be scheduled between 18 and 19. And it is a one inch trigger for this parking lot and it's seven days a week. And I would say from one to 99 inches because we're not depending on the inches there. Now, this is the interesting thing. Uh, when it's a contract, it's not going to build up and above, but you really should associate the rate. So if this is a $300 push and it's budgeted um, 1.5 hours, you need to put this in here for production rate based estimating and job costing. So that's important. So there's general ways we actually get this set up. So now that we've got uh, each client, we own each client, we set up their contract if it's applicable and all the services. Now we kind of have them in a holding pattern. So we're going to want to go in and the next step is create um, teams. So we want to create all our plowing routes. So we've already got quite a few here, but we've got all our commercial plowing routes and then we've got all our residential and then our sidewalk crews. So um, you go in under teams, add a team and create it. Uh, main thing is you need a description, a code. You can select the icon. Uh, most important part is put the starting address for where that crew is starting. So whether it's the person's house or the shop or somewhere else, that's where the route optimization is going to run off of. And you can put in your team assignments by clicking in here and dragging in. And the days of work that they're authorized to work. So once we have all your crews set up, now we're ready to go in and get these routes built out for you. So we're going to go into our scheduling. Uh, snow dispatch jobs, and we're going to create a fake test dispatch. So what we're going to do is go into the plus icon and add an event. Um, we're going to leave it as pending, and we're going to name it. So we're going to put test uh, route group. So now we know, and you probably want to put the data in here because you're going to do it every year and hit save, leave the dispatch date the same. Now you're able to put in between pending, working, and complete. Uh, we'll get into that later on probably the next webinar, but I wanna give you at least a high idea how to get this built in if you're kind of hitting the uh, the ninth hour to get these in. And as you continue to add them, you may wanna to continue to work this until um, you know we're ready to roll. But now that we have that created, we're gonna go into more, we're gonna to add to dispatch. And then we're gonna go in and dispatch by service, not by route or resource. Um, or actually, no, by resource, I'm sorry. So we're gonna go in and select our test crew for plowing. So if we went in and selected that test crew that needs to be scheduled, that is what we're gonna be putting in here and be able to do that. And that's gonna um, get all the jobs that are in there ready to roll. Now. In this test account, I don't have it that way, so I'm just going to go in and um, pull a bunch of information in just so we have some information so you can see what it looks like with some data. Um, and then we would just literally go down to the bottom here and hit search. But in your instance, you're going to hit dispatch by resource and you're going to pull your plowing or salting to be routed. Once you hit search, that's going to load all of your properties. Um, this may take a minute. So as we scroll to the bottom, Got a ton of them here. We're going to add to dispatch. And we need to select them all. Once we have these all in there, we're going to optimize them. Like I said, a lot of data in here, so we're going to do it. But main thing is you're going to dispatch by resource, and that's that plowing to be routed. We're going to select them all and throw them on a map. 
So it's 152 jobs that we potentially could do. So as we plus in and zoom in, uh, we're going to grab into this town here and say these group in the red. We've already done this once in a, a test video. Um, just these would all come up the same color. So you'd go into this group selections and just select the, the, the routes that you want. Now, in this test account, we don't have budgeted hours, but you should have budgeted hours and a projected cost. So when we select those, it would tell you the total budget hours. I've got 42 driveways and a total revenue. Um, depending if they're per push or what they were, that revenue should be there if you actually add that. The so next thing is you're going to go in and select your resource. Now, these are the crews that we're actually assigning these jobs to. So I'm going to pull up one of my test jobs here. So I'm going to pull up test plow crew number one and leave the date the same, make it permanent and update it. Now, that's assigning that group to that route or that driver. Now it's not optimized yet, but now we're going to systematically go through the map and chunk all of these out. And I'd recommend getting the route so they optimize and kind of drive into each other. Um, that's going to be some of a optimized but manual process all at the same time. So the next thing you're going to do is scroll up to resource here and define right into that, that route that you're working on. So I believe it was this one. Let's see, because we'll see in a second. Okay, so we have all the jobs. We're going to go into actions, optimize stops. And if it's 23 or less stops, you can use Google. It's free. Uh, Track Road or Ursi will do that. So once you do that, you hit optimize. I don't have any more optimization credits. So you can go in and plus add them here. And let's see if this works. So we just bought, um, let's get 50 here. That should work. All right, perfect. So we're going to go back to our scheduling dispatch board for snow. And we're going to pull up our test group pending. And we're going to pull it up by route because I just chunked those out. So make sure you have those bought before you actually get into this. All right, so those should be all the jobs. Yep, there's 42. We're going to show them on the map. We've got them all in there. And then we're going to go into action optimize. And we're going to use one of the selections. That's our crew. And hit optimize. What that's going to do is optimize from your shop all the way through and back to your shop for optimized drive time and minimize that dashboard time. Now, once you all have them, you, you may want to optimize them so they kind of run into each other. Uh, but that's definitely for another video. But once you have them here, you can go show route order, and it's going to drop uh, pins on there. And knowing this area pretty well, it's got us coming in and shooting through, uh, up, through, and back. And that actually is pretty close. Now, you may want to um, go out and just give it dial in and give it a fit, quick visual representation. And once you do that, you can go to manual. And if one and two is the wrong order, you can drag and drop them here, and that would update that. So once you have it, we're going to update every week right here. Yes, we want to save it. And now that route is done. So you want to go through all your pins and chunk out all your routes. And then we're going to go in and save all those routes. So under the gear icon, we're going to go to master routes. And we're going to go in and add a route. And we're going to go in. We don't have to create services or anything like that. <coughs> what we're going to do is grab the assigned resource. And this is our test crew right here that we just did. And we can exclude or um, have different jobs here. But really, we're just going to grab that route and hit search. That should grab all 42 of these here. And we're going to route it once again. We're going to optimize the stops and hit optimize and that should optimize to pretty much the exact routing that you had in the other one and we've got all 42s advertised so once we hit save changes now we've got that optimized route that we had already in there so that is the idea that we've optimized these um so we've set up the packages for the stakes we've created crews um we've optimized everything and got everything the way we need it and now let's say it's snowing so we need to go out and hit schedule snow dispatch jobs 
we would go in and add a job. So this is a test uh, working event. And I'm gonna hit save. Same exact thing we did with the original, getting everything on one screen. We hit that plus sign and added it. We're going to go to the more and add to dispatch. And now instead of doing it by service, we're doing it by uh, resource or master route. So we can pull in that master route here. And I can go in and select how many inches I want. So if that master route included salting and plowing, I can make that inch differentiation. Um, and you can show exclusions, or if you don't, it won't show them. Uh, but if I go in now and search, this should pull up all 42 jobs as advertised here, as it does in the same order. So um, that's how you get those out. And then we'd add it to dispatch once we select them all and hit add to dispatch. Now we're ready to dispatch them to the crews out in the middle of the night or during the day. And once we go out, we go to actions and dispatch. Now they're going to turn from that uh, calendar icon to the group, the mobile. They're live and the mobiles are ready to be printed. And the second additional step, which is a little bit different in snow dispatch, is you want to go in here and edit that with a little paper or pen. Instead of pending now, it is working. We save it. Now, um, under snow dispatch, under snow bitch, let's close out or close out day. We've got the 41 crews that we've dispatched as the crews clock in and clock out. We're going to have a start and stop time here for job costing and billing. And then once we are done uh, in the mobile, it would be green checkbox green. Um, when they're ready to be completed, or if you're manually doing it, you want to go in after you manually enter the times, just go in and complete. And that's going to flip that to ready to be invoiced. Unlike the rest of the system, there's one extra step because uh, it's going to let you complete the whole event to bill it out in one chunk. So once that's done, we're going back to the pencil. We're going in and marking it complete, hitting save. And then the final step is to go into accounting, snow invoicing. And instead of like the normal system where it bills out at midnight, say daily, weekly, or monthly, or custom day, we're going to select the event, select the invoice date, select the terms, search. If those are all done, they'd all loaded, and then we generate the invoices. So that's one extra step for Snow Dispatch to allow you to handle several pushes or different things during that event and bill out the whole event. So stem to stern in about 35 minutes. That's how you tackle it. Comments or questions, let me know, and I can bake out some smaller individual videos. But with the timeline I had today, I wanted to show you front to back how that's all set up. Um, and then don't forget, at the end of the year, we want to go to the waiting list and release that package for the snow staking as well for repairs and removal.